Good morning, good morning. How are we this morning on our big Easter weekend at the Tab Church London? Happy Resurrection Sunday, family. We welcome you. Come on, it's not welcome. just a, a normal Sunday. No, nah, this is a big Sunday. Right? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I love Easter <laughs> at the Tab. It's been a great weekend. And gosh, Resurrection Sunday is so important Come to on. our faith. It's, it's paramount. It's like the centerpiece. The cornerstone, the, the foundation. That's the word. The yeah, cornerstone. Come on, Christ alone, the cornerstone. <laughs> That's what Resurrection Sunday I'm is. I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to, 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 to today. It's going to yes. be a great service, a yes, great yes, time. Yes. Wherever you're tuning in, don't forget, you guys are going to have a phenomenal time. It's going to be a beautiful experience. And if you are a first-time visitor, you couldn't have picked a better Sunday, to be honest. Come on. Because it's Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. And whether you need God to resurrect your relationship with him, whether you need him to resurrect your finances, resurrect your joy, your peace, today is a great day for you to be a first-time visitor here Most with us. Definitely. That's our hope, right? It Death is. Come on. Your sting. It's going Come to on. be powerful. Yes. Expect the great. Yeah. Understand as well that whatever circumstances we're going through, the story doesn't have to end that it, way. It with don't Christ, end like that. There's power. With Come Christ, on. things can change. Yes. It's powerful. Come on. And after Friday, I don't know if you lot were here on Good Friday, but it was a good Friday. Come on. Like, Come you know, the, the story ain't great at that point, but the sermon that we heard, yeah. the worship experience that we had, wow. transformational. From beginning it made me want to go to theology school. <laughs> Because I'm sitting there thinking, how the heck did you see that? And that's the thing I love about um, Easter at the time. Yeah. How pastor brings it to life, the, the scripture, unpacking it about the Come go, on. what the yeah. priest had to do. But for me, my favorite part was nailing, you know, the things, the the things, things that we may be holding on. Come on. on holding, to that was cross. powerful. Honestly, that mind, that understanding. That imagery. Yeah, powerful. That imagery was so, so powerful. Nailing things to the cross and finding how... That is pertinent in the scriptures as well yep. to what Jesus did. Come on. Nailing our sins to the cross. Nailing everything to the cross. So that is... We don't have to carry it anymore, guys. We don't have we to carry don't it anymore. Have to I'm, carry I'm it. out here flicking stuff off my shoulders because I don't need that no more. <laughs> Come we on. are free. I'm free. We are free. <laughs> it's a freedom. It was a freedom service. Amen. But after today, yeah. there's still more to come, right? Yep. Premier Gospel is coming tomorrow with Pastor Mike, usual at 8.30 a.m. Make sure you're on there. We know it's a bank holiday, which means you're probably not going to be working. So you can be up 8.30, chilling with Pastor, listening to his word, and, uh, and just growing. I think yeah. that's the important thing. That's it. That's it. Starting the new month right. Come on. The next quarter of the year. Yes. In addition to that, we have a Wednesday night live. Come on. Now, I absolutely love Wednesday yeah, night live. powerful. In terms of growing, understanding... Um, the way past unpacks yes. the word yes, it's yes. such a great tool if you're struggling to even yeah. get in the word this come is on. a perfect environment for you yes. don't feel like you have to be a bible scholar uh -huh. no no no, no. Come, come here on. not knowing and become educated exactly. become informed it's such a great environment we yeah. go deeper we unpack the word yes. it's going to be a great time and it builds a great appetite as well for yeah. you to go and do further study correct correct that's so but so also true. first friday is coming up as well yep. and we have the power prayer call with pastor donna maria so make sure you don't miss that you know that she hears from heaven come and on. she can help you hear from heaven too <laughs> but also on the monday the 8th so not tomorrow but a monday afterwards we have tya yeah we've got the get the bag come part on. two come on it's got to be incredible we really have such a great um, yes. session the last one come but on we're going to go deeper looking at the abilities yes we just want to be in the room come on we you really don't have so miss many this. of you guys there come out yes part two. we continue on and then the final thing that we have for this month is empower our men's ministry has a series called Right Way Up starting oh. on the 10th, 17th, and the 24th, Wednesdays of April. Make sure you are there for this three-part series. You can register online. It's going to be an amazing time to just come together and fellowship as men. So if you are a TAB member, make sure you register. It's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. I'm excited, guys. So much happening in the month of April. Come on. A lot to be excited for, a lot to expect. We're, we're just getting started. But Thanks. today... Make sure your heart is open, yeah. your mind is ready, and expectant for what God can do in your life, Come but on. also the beauty of what he's already done, Come on. what Jesus has already done for us. And I just pray that as you go through today's service, whatever it is in your life that you need God to resurrect, put that as a point of call for him Amen. and as a prayer point and catch a true revelation of how amazing Jesus really is. And hopefully that changes your life. Yeah. So guys, have a great service. As I would just prayed, Come open on. your hearts. It's going to be on. phenomenal. Christ is there, ready to meet you. Happy we love you. Resurrection Sunday. Come on. We, we love, love you. you. And we want to see you soon. Take care. Love Take you, care. Family. Make sure you...
Tab London, stand on your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning I have been given the greatest honor. I'm going to be introducing a man who single-handedly did the impossible. Some may know him as the Messiah. Some may know him as the man upstairs. But his exploits in just the three-year ministry led him to be known as the greatest of all time. He's the King of Kings. He's the hero of our faith. For when the world was dark and destitute and destined to die, he stepped off of his throne. He laid his life on the line and crossed out the judgment. You lot ain't hearing me. I said he stepped off of his throne. He laid his life on the line and crossed out the judgment. He's a champion who's never lost a battle. He's a commander who can never win a war, lose a war. He's a fighter who wins every round by knockout. He's a striker who's never missed a goal. He squared up to death and said, death, where is your sting? He looked down at a defeated grave and said, grave, where is your victory? There is no Grammy worthy of his performance and there's no Oscar worthy of his acts. Tab London, stand on your feet, raise your voice and give your praise to the GOAT the greatest of all time. Come on, let's lift up our hands. Let's praise him. Let's praise the goat of all time. He's risen. He's risen. He's risen. 
Jesus. Tell your neighbor there's something about his name. Hallelujah. 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 He's fighting for you. He's fighting for me. He's on our side in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, top family. Just look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor, he's alive. Yeah. High five your neighbor. Tell them he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Yeah. He's alive. Yeah. He's alive. Yeah. He's alive. I just want to send a big welcome to all of the TAP family. And if you are here for the first time, we want to say welcome to you, to all of our online crowd as well. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hallelujah. So we're just going to open up in prayer. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, our shame. Lord, everything has been paid for. And we want to thank you. We want to glorify your name. We want to magnify your name like we have never magnified you. And we pray, Lord, that you will take full control, that you will have full dominion and power in every area and every avenue of our lives. And we give you praise and glory. And everyone says, Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus.
Somebody lift up your voice. If you believe God is fighting for you, lift up your voice. Come on. Come on, I cannot hear you tap landing. Lift up your voice. Pushing back the darkness. Come on, he's pushing back the darkness. Yeah. Can you imagine Jesus walking out of that tomb and saying, It is finished? Make some noise. Tell your neighbor, He is risen. Come on, tell your neighbor, He is risen. Now we're going to do a song that says, you got up. Tell your neighbor, you got up. Get a 
church and say, I will rise. you can do somebody lift up your voice and give God a shout before you spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh.
shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming at me. Yeah. No one, you won't kick out. Lie, you won't turn it up. Let me hear the church. It's no shadow. Mountain. Coming up. There's no It's my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've got peace that makes no sense. I put my faith in Jesus. He's never left me down. Faithful through change. So I would be fair. Christ is my He's the rock on which I stand. When everything around me, yeah, I've got peace that makes no sense. See, I put my faith in. He's never let me down. Faithful through generations, so I would he fail. Tell your neighbor, he won't, he won't. Ah, come on, if you believe it, come on. Say, he won't, he won't fail. Tell your neighbor he won't fail, he won't fail. Church. 
Just give your neighbor a big high five and say he won't fail. Come on, give your neighbor a high five. Just tell them he won't fail. I don't know what you're going through, but he's not going to fail. He's not going to let you down. Hallelujah. Bless God. We've come to a time where I'm just going to read a few announcements. And then we will go into our offering. Now, firstly, tomorrow on Monday, the 1st of April at 8.30 a.m., 
our senior pastor Mike White joins Belinda Simpson on the Premier Gospel Breakfast Show. All right, so tune in as he brings a word to start the new month right. Also on Wednesday, the 3rd of April, this is this Wednesday, again join um, our senior pastor Mike as he digs deep into scripture and provides us with timeless wisdom and practical life advice. All right, so this is gonna be this Wednesday. Doors will be open at 7 p.m. All right, doors are opening at 7 p.m. We're also having our power prayer call this Friday, um, the 5th of April at 6.30 a.m. with our senior pastor, Donna Maria, and you know that she can pray, all right? And she leads the Tamp family in seeking God and praying for his blessings this Friday, all right? So that's 6.30 a.m. Hopefully the details are on the screen behind. So look, join that call. You will be blessed. Empower, so this is for our men. They're meeting on the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th of April. So Empower presents Right Way Up. It's a three-part series. Um, spaces are limited, so you will need to register using the QR code on the screen. We are a busy church. We love praying, and we've got lots that we're doing. Bless God. So those are the announcements for this week. And we're now going to move into an important time. And it is our time for giving. If you're here for the first time, we want to say thank you for being here with us. And we just want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. In fact, what I want you to do, just look at the person who's next to you and just give them a smile. Because you never know, they might be the person who's here for the first time. All right, give them a smile. Even look behind you and give them a smile. Bless the name of the Lord. So there are a number of ways that you can give into the house. Um, you can give by cash app. You can give by um, card as well at the back of the auditorium on the left hand side which will be your right hand side there are a number of ways that you can give and hopefully behind me on the screen you will see contactless payments yes for contactless and i just want to say to be generous with your giving be generous there's a passage of scripture that i want the screen team just to um help me with and it's taken from St. John 3 verse 16 bless God just waiting for the screen team to help me anybody know what St. John 3 verse 16 says I love my church you know come on church read it out for me Give your neighbor a high five. Come on. Bless the name of the Lord. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son. And what an apt scripture that we can read for this particular weekend. Because we know that God, number one, we learn that God loves. He gave. And he was sacrificial as well, all right? So he loves, he gave, he was sacrificial. And when we want to be imitating what God loves, what God loves, we want to be in the imitating. So we want to love, we want to give, and we want to be sacrificial. So today... I want you to do your very best, all right? Do your very best. This is an important time in the calendar, and we just want to show God how much we love him and how much we want for everything that he has called for us to do so that we can do it. 
and it takes finances. There's no getting away from it. It will take some finances, but there's something good about when we're all pulling together. And for those of you who continue to give generously and sacrificially every week, we salute you, we applaud you, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't stop giving because the vision for this house, the vision for everything that we're doing is so great. And we want to follow the mandate that God has given on to us. So we're going to love. We're going to give. We're going to be generous. And we're going to be sacrificial. Just look at your neighbor again. Your poor neighbor, right? Maybe you want to look at the one behind instead. Look at the one behind. Look at the one behind. Look at the one behind. And just tell them, love Give, be generous, and sacrifice. Love, give, be generous, and sacrifice. Love, give, be generous, and sacrifice. Love, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> That's what we want to be, all right? That's what we want to be. So I want you to rise to your feet right now. Bless the name of the Lord. We're going to pray. There are loads of different ways to give. And we're in a great house. In a great, great house. Father, we just want to come before you at this time. And we want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for giving your only son for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being generous. Thank you for being sacrificial. And Father, we continue to want to emanate you. Everything that you have called for us to do, we want to do. And we want to be in our place. And Father, we also know that there are people who need provision, who need our help. And we want to ensure that everything, Lord, that you have given unto us to be a blessing in your house, that we want to be a blessing. Father, we pray that you will take control, have full dominion and power in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. 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 So I just want you to repeat after me for the, just repeat after me. As I give in today's offering, I will love, I will give, and I will sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So look, follow the directions of the hosts. And we're asking that each and every one of you, whether or not you have to give today or not, please still march around. All right, we still want you to march around and we know that the next time when you come, you will be able to have something to give. All right, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about it if you don't have it today. We still want you to keep the aisles, keep the, your, the road that you're on, we want you to keep it flowing. All right, so when you, the hosts come and they're directing you, just walk and follow around in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, do you serve a great God? Come on, find somebody else and say, do you serve a great God? If you know that you serve a great God, I need you to lift up your hands and praise him because we know that we serve a great God. Hallelujah. Come on and say. He's a great God, great God, hands in the air. 
Come on, lift up your praise if you know there's nobody like him. Come on, somebody's got something to praise him for. You've got a reason to praise him. The fact that you're standing here today, somebody open up your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise him because he's mighty. Praise him because he's risen. Praise him because he's great. Praise him. You've got a reason to praise him. I tell you to open up your mouth. Let the enemy hear you. That he can huff and puff, but it still won't work. The our God rules. Our God has risen. Yeah. So we got to praise him. Because he's risen. We got to praise him. Because he's mighty. We got to praise him. Because he's the king of kings. We got to praise him. Because he's the greatest of all time. Oh, you better praise him. No, no, not yet. Anybody, 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 anybody. One more time, say. Nobody, nobody like him. Nobody, nobody like him. Nobody, nobody like him. And nobody, nobody like him. Ain't nobody, nobody like him. Come on, let's go. Come on. Ah, see, me flow near your sick and me flow near your heavy. So me be me flow no so me say when you're ready. Me get dangerous in here. Somebody, somebody give the Lord a shout. We have to do a remix, 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 remix. Now we're ready. I'll try, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. I'll try. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Drew, let me hear that guitar. Come on. I'm praising the valley. Why are you getting excited for? I'm praising the valley. Praise on the mountain. See, I praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. See, I praise when I'm not Praise when surrounded. And my favorite part says, Praise is the water. My enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. Come on. I praise when surrounded. Praise is the wall. Praise is the wall. My enemies drowning. Come with that one more time. I praise in the valley, say. I praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm down. Praise when I'm down. Praise when I'm numbered. Praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. Praise when surrounded. Lua, lua, lua. Praise is the water. Praise is the water. Your enemies surrounded. My enemies surrounded. As long as I'm breathing. Yeah. Hey. 
They know it. I serve a very big God. Say, aha. We serve a very big God. I serve a very big Come on, one more time. A very big guy. Come on, he's always back. One more time, I serve a very big God. One more time, you serve a very big God. In the morning when I wake up, 
I will sing my praise unto you, my God. I will, I will to you. Cause you will be my help on the level. Oh, oh, oh. Everything is a double double o. Promotion double double o. Your blessings double double o. Everything is a double double o. Louie 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 Yeshu Louie 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 Somebody scream! Come on, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Come on, to the right. Come on, to the left, to the right, to the left. All right. What are some of my older generation? Ruben. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Last one. You are good and your mercy is forever. You are good and your mercy is forever. Come on, come on, I cannot hear you tell. Somebody make some noise. He's worthy. Come on, is he worthy? Is he faithful? Father, we bless you. We give you glory. David said, who am I that you're mindful of me? In spite of where we've been, in spite of what we've done, his love never fails. Come on, tell your neighbor, his love never fails. His love never fails. Because he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave. No, he won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave. No, he won't fail. Cause I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it with my own eyes. He keeps every promise. I never. Seen it in my own life. He keeps every promise. 
I'll never be the same. Come on, one more time. Say, I've seen it in my own life. Seen it in my own life. Everywhere I turn, he keeps it. I'll never be the same. Say, I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in my own life. Come on, one more time. Say, I've seen it with my own. I've seen it in my own. Jesus keeps every I'll never be. Can we do it one last time? Say, I've seen it with my own. Church London, this is Resurrection Sunday. This is Resurrection Sunday. Our God is alive. Can we get excited? Come on, can you lift up your voice and give God thanks that He's alive? Is anybody glad that He's alive? Can you turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, our God is alive? Turn to the person behind you and say, Neighbor, He has risen. Day because it is a great day. Anybody glad and excited to be here on Resurrection Sunday? Come on, balcony, are you glad to be here on Resurrection Sunday? Hallelujah. We give God thanks. He is the risen King. And we want to celebrate Him this morning. Are you going to join with us as we continue in worship? Is it all right if we do a little medley just to say how great how God, our God is and the fact that He's alive? Anybody excited about that? So we're going to sing this song for you. Tab worship, you ready? Yeah. And we've got our mass choir, our tab mass choir are going to join us. They're going to join us today. So can you make some noise that your God is alive? Fans, let's go. Come on, Tab Church London, make some noise that your God is alive. is alive. He's still 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 alive. Life, 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 life. But he rose on the third day. That old death just couldn't keep him in the grave. He arose with all power in his
praise will rise to Christ our King.
biggest praise you can find. Somebody shout like he's alive. From the balcony to the floor, from the platform to the door, somebody make some noise, let him know that you're glad he rose from the dead. My God. One more time, high five five people. Tell them he's alive, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Why, why are you so quiet? He's alive. Why are you shutting down your praise? He's alive. He got victory over death. I know, I know I'm not preaching yet, but I can't help when I think about the fact that he got up. And if I've got him on the inside of me, then look at your neighbor and say, I'll get up too. This is the day. If you, listen, sound man, help me with everything you got on my monitors, but listen, if you registered and you got into the house today, do not let your seats become your best friend. This is the day that we come to give God the biggest praise. You ought to want to go home sweaty. Go home having done some spiritual calisthenics. Giving God all the glory, letting the devil know that if Jesus conquered the greatest enemy, which is death, then no weapon formed against me. Where's my church? Where's my church? E tribe, praise it with some fire. Light the page up. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, after all I've been through, after everything the enemies tried to do, I've not come to church on Easter Sunday to shut my mouth. I'm gonna get on your nerves with noise. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I wish I could have some old school church in here. Shake your neighbor quickly. Grab him and shake him. Shake him and rock him. I said, do you know what I've been through? But Jesus in me means I'm a survivor. Where's my church? Where's my church? Where's my church? I just need 25 praises. Just 25. Sometimes you can't tell people what you've been through. But if you watch my next praise, if you watch my next shout, if you watch my next jump, it will tell you all the hell that God brought me through. Now when I say go, I need to find at least a hundred people. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, give me some room, just two inches, that's all I need. Cause I'm about to release the biggest praise of the service. Some of you've come through sickness. Some of you've come through depression. Some of you come through debt. Some of you come through divorce. Some of you come through all kinds of desperation. But right now, I know I've not preached yet, but right now, before we go any further, I need you to act like you know it's Jesus who brought me through. Jesus gave me victory. Jesus uh, wrecked the devil's plans. Uh, Jesus uh, set my soul on fire. On your marks, uh, get set. Uh, go, 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 go. Hey.
your neighbor one more time. Say, neighbor, will you be my praise partner today? I don't care how stuck up they look. Tell them, I've got too much to praise God for. So I need somebody to help me. Give him a jump, a shout, a leap on your marks once again. Get set, go. to teach today but real quick I need to find some witnesses witnesses are people who are willing to testify I'm not going to ask you to take the mic I'm going to ask you to give a shout and that shout is yes anybody in here anybody in here every time I give you a category or online my e-tribe my e-tribe anytime I give you a category I need you to type in bold letters yes and in the house, I need you to shout yes and then give God the biggest praise you can find. Can I find the witnesses who God has healed before? Can I call to the witness stand all the witnesses that God has provided for you before? some more witnesses who God has released you from depression before. Now lastly, I want to find the witnesses that everybody wrote you off, but God said you shall rise. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. your hands together like the devil's head is between them. Let's go. You got 10 seconds. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one. Give God one more shout in the house. Come on, church. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what the enemy's told you in 2024 already. But one more time, get that thing on your mind and just shout victory. All right, we got to pray. Lift your hands with me. Father. Father, we love you. We thank you that you conquered death. And if you conquered the greatest enemy of humankind by rising from the dead, then every other thing is nothing for you. And I thank you that I have you on the inside of me. And because we have you, Jesus, we can overcome every hell, every negativity because of the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And for this, I give you praise. 
Give God the biggest praise in the house. Come on, church. Now, before we go any further, before we go any further, I want you to offer your own prayer. I want you to mark Easter Sunday. Listen to me. Mark Easter Sunday. There's so much evidence in your life. If you think about it just for a moment, there's so much evidence in your life of the fact that God is able to help you overcome everything the enemy throws at you. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, did you know I'm a survivor? Go on, tell her. They don't need to know of what. They just need to know. Because you can't tell everybody your business. But when, you, you know, you, the Bible says those who have been forgiven much, love much. I also think those who have been delivered from much, love much. And you can see their love through their praise. So when you see people jumping and shouting, some of us are, are, are PhD, some of us are master's degree holders, there's professionals in here. Don't think we're just a bunch of wild, uncouth social misfits. We're just a bunch of grateful people for the fact that God has been faithful. Do you know, as a pastor, you're a peopleologist. You're a peopleologist as a pastor. And when people tell you their stuff, especially when I used to do all the counseling when the church was much smaller, people tell you some, you, you look at people, you think, you've been, they come and see you and they tell you stuff they've been through. And you say, you've been through all of that. And you look so, you look like this, they said. And they said, Pastor, if it wasn't for God. Because the great thing about God is that you never end up looking like what you've been through. Look at the person next to you one more time and say, I don't look like what I've been through. You'd, you'd never guess. Tell them you'd never guess. Tell them you'd never know. And tell them it's none of your business. Just tell them, watch my praise and my praise tells my story. There's, there's, you know, as a pastor, there's secrets people tell you that you have to, I have to take to the grave with me. People come tell me stuff they ain't even telling their doctor. People tell you stuff, man. And, and you know, one of the things that you see, it does, I guess therapists kind of understand this, is it, it kind of does two things to you. It makes you feel, obviously, deep empathy with the individual, especially if you're a not just a preacher, but a pastor. Because some people are preachers, some people are pastors. Preachers are good with the platform and the pulpit, but pastors love people. And when you hear people's issues, it, you, you empathize, you, you have to. But at the same time, it also renews your faith. Because I'm like, my God, I had no idea that you went through all of that and you look like this? And sometimes you've got to look at yourself in the mirror in the morning. No matter how negative life is being to you. Or how much the enemy is attacking you. And you must look at yourself and say, you must be born again. <laughs> you must be a child of God. You must have resurrection power on the inside of you. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here sometimes you've got to preach just get yourself a mirror and talk to yourself they say it's people who have sanity problems to talk to themselves let me tell you something sometimes it's talking to myself that's kept me sane <laughs> high five your neighbor and say he's talking to you right there go on tell her in the car just looking in the mirror saying bro you can do it you know you're good fam you're good you got this. God's with you, you know. You got, you got to preach to yourself. Get yourself a mirror. Get yourself a preaching mirror. Just carry it with you in your purse, girls. In your back pocket, bro. But for real, for real, in this next moment, I want us to offer a thanksgiving prayer. Because you and you are standing next to a survivor. And as we always say in old school church, if it had not been for God who was on my side, truth be told I don't know where I'd be when you think about how faithful he's been to you songwriter said what does he say he said all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so 
Let me hear the church team. With every breath that I have made, I will sing of the goodness. Let me hear them say, All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. Think about what God has done for you. All my life, you have been so. So good with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Everybody praying in Jesus' name. Come on, team. Thank you, Jesus. When you finish praying, just give God one more ovation, clapping your hands, telling him thank you before you take your seats. It's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, that we'll begin. Matthew, chapter 28. On Easter Sunday, more appropriately known as Resurrection Sunday, we commemorate and observe divinity overcoming the greatest enemy of humanity. Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully man who became a corpse and then came back to life. And because of that fact presented to us by, listen to me, please listen to the specificity of the words I use, eyewitnesses. I want us to try for a moment to divorce ourselves from just for a moment, from simple tradition that we think just comes from what we would loosely state as a religious belief and approach the story just at least at the outset of our journey today, understanding this is historical fact. But to set a backdrop Let's read Matthew 28, verse 1 to 15. The Bible says in the New Living Translation, early <laughs> on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. For context, when you bring in the other witnesses, 
the other gospel writers, you'll realize that these ladies were leading a group of ladies. But of course, Matthew highlights these two leading ladies. But there's more than just the two of them there. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, a supernatural visitation, came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. This is the writer's best ability to describe the brightness of the glowing of this divine angelic being. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a, what he describes as a dead faint. They passed out. Hmm. Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. This is some of the best news in this text. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Where's my church? Every time you hear somebody say Jesus rose from the dead, you ought to say something. Say thank you, Jesus. Say hallelujah. Say amen. Just as he said, just as he said, just as he said would happen. Come, this is important girls, come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples, be witnesses, that he has risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember, this is important girls. Look at the emphasis here. Remember what I have told you. This is very important. You're going to be witnesses. The woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, whoo, Jesus met them. Hey, girls. He greeted them. And they ran to him. And grasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests who had set Jesus up to be crucified. Told these leading priests, the ops. They told these leading priests what had happened. A meeting with the elders of the religious elite was called and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, listen, you must say that Jesus' disciples came during the night while you were sleeping and they stole his body. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up. We'll back you up. For, for, we'll back you up so that you won't get into any trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews. And they still tell that lie today. And the people say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he got up. Look at the other neighbor saying, you can too. It's interesting. Every Easter across the globe, there'll be churches, of course, celebrating with big productions, some with extra elements added in. As we do whenever we want to celebrate a significant occasion. And this is the most significant thing in the Christian calendar. Because if Christ did not really rise from the dead, then this gathering is pointless. 
you actually have no eternal life. First Corinthians teaches us, according to the Apostle Paul in First Corinthians, that actually if Christ has not risen from the dead, then we have nothing left to gather for. It's the very foundation. This is not simply a nice story. This is critical to our Christianity. I hope you're going to preach with me a little bit later on, but just for now, I want to remind you of something because when you look at the Bible, we often look at the Bible as a book. And to some degree, yes, that's correct, but actually, it's a book of books. As you drift into the New Testament, you find actually books become letters, witness statements by more than just one individual. And they collaborate and corroborate together to give us understanding much like you would require something in a court of law. The more witnesses you have in a case, the stronger the case. It's one thing to say, yes, I just want to hear from one person and one person only, but actually, that one person could become a weak witness unless you've got other witnesses around to corroborate and to collaborate the story. I guess to make sure better English, make sure the story is true. And we have a plethora of witnesses of the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Interesting, some say it's just a figment of our imagination, it's just a story. Well, if it's just a story, why would Peter, the apostle, eventually have been crucified when he, all he had to do was deny it was true? Church tradition teaches us in the history of the church how some of these what we call apostles, were eventually killed because of the story. I don't know about you, but if they said, listen, we're going to crucify you unless you tell us whether it's a lie or not, most of us in here, if it was a lie, we'd say, I lied. Peter was so deeply connected to Jesus by the end of his ministry, by the time he was crucified, given that capital punishment, that he said, you know what the story teaches us, his traditional story teaches us that Peter said, actually, I don't want to be, if you're going to crucify me, don't crucify me like Jesus was crucified. I'm not worthy of that. Turn the cross upside down at his own request. Peter was willing to be crucified. All he had to do was deny. Paul, the apostle, Paul, the apostle, all he had to do was deny. Paul was beheaded. Other apostles were skinned alive because, of course, when you go back into ancient history or go back into at least first century history, you don't need to go into ancient, just first century, you'll realize that much of the capital punishment of the Roman rulers was quite gruesome and quite cruel. But yet these individuals were willing to lose their lives for a story? No, 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 no. This must have had some kind of truth. John, you all know John, wrote the book of Revelation, the letter that we call the book of Revelation. John, tradition teaches us he was boiled in oil. Fam. Why would so many witnesses have been willing to die if this thing was a lie? It don't make no sense. This must be true. These are eyewitnesses. Now, we've got their books and their statements that we call epistles and letters and books. But when you look at them individually, they are witness statements from individuals who are willing to die for what they knew to be truth. And the only reason they really would have died is if they knew that death was not the end. That if they had the same Jesus they saw die. Where's my church? On the inside of them. Then they knew that you can do what you want to my body. You can't mess with my soul. I will rise. Where's my church? Where's my church? 
I'll rise again. Not only that, but just stay with me for a moment. Stay with me for a moment. And understand this. That actually, the story is written by them in such a way. Listen to me, those of you who know your Bibles. It's written in such a way that it makes the disciples look bad. Why would they have written themselves as being the cowards? If the story was not true, many people know that when it comes to ancient history, people often corrupt stories to make themselves look like the heroes. But in a patriarchal, male-dominated culture, these men wrote the story, their testimonies, their witness statements in such a way that makes the girls look like the heroes. Wrong crowd. <laughs> the men wrote their testimonies saying, we locked ourselves after the resurrection in a room because we were frightened of the Jewish religious leaders and the soldiers coming to find us and associating us with Jesus and we may end up in the same situation we just saw Jesus in. They were so afraid that they locked themselves into a room that Jesus had to come find them after he rose from the dead. And the room was so bolted up that Jesus didn't even bother knock, he just walked through the door. <clears throat> Push your neighbor and say, that's my God, that's my God. <laughs> it's written, we just read Matthew's account that let us know, here come the girls. <laughs> it's the girls that are the ones who aren't afraid. They're like, we're going to see Jesus whether they're soldiers or not. Oh my God. Why, if it was a lie, would Matthew have made himself look bad? These are witness statements. This is not just a nice story that good little Christians get happy about. This is historical fact corroborated by a multiplicity of witness statements that have been pulled together into what we call the New Testament of the Bible. I love this. Because it reminds us of the fact that we are not simply gathered here in just some mystical religious experience where we have this fantasaical story that we believe somebody called Jesus the Christ was God and he rose from the dead. No, we are celebrating historical fact. Push your neighbor and say, I praise over facts. That's the wrong neighbor. Find the other neighbor and say, hey neighbor, you see my praise? It's based on facts. It's based on facts. This is not fantasy. When I praise God because Jesus rose from the dead, I've got evidence. I've got witness statements. There's a whole case that gives me evidence that it's true that he rose from the dead. Good Jesus. He rose from the dead. I love this. So, so I want to approach this now real quickly. Uh, we won't take too long because we all know the story, but I think it's important for us to rem remind ourselves of some what's, some what's. I want to talk about, first of all, what happened? What happened? What ha so what happened? What, this resurrection from the dead business, for those of you who don't know, let's talk a little bit, just a little bit about what happened. What happened, and I love what happened in what we've just read, because I can't read the text and not deal with the text. You all know that Jesus, of course, died, and uh, of course, his body, the broken body, as it were, the dead body of Jesus, the corpse body, none of the bones were broken, but of course, he is now literally dead, and the body was taken off the cross uh, by Joseph of Arimathea, and, and of course, uh, you've got the, uh, of course, member of the Jewish religious council, uh, Nicodemus, he take, they, take, they take this body off the cross. They take the body off the cross and, and they put the body. I love this, guys, because I think the story teaches us a lot about things we can learn about ourselves if we're really followers of Jesus. And they put the body in a borrowed tomb, a borrowed tomb, a, a, a new tomb, the Bible lets us know as well. They placed the body in there. And of course, uh, the religious elite was so obsessed, obsessed with crushing 
the story of Jesus because they did not like the trouble he had been causing. This carpenter's son in their minds, this untrained carpenter's son has come and has messed up our system. We are the religious Judaistic leaders and we've got a system. The system is we run the people on behalf of the Roman government. The Roman government give us backhanders and we keep the people at bay through a religious system. We wear long robes. We look special and stand out. So the people believe that because of our robes and our costumes, we are superior to them. We've got this system down packed. And here comes Jesus. Jesus, born from a crazy town in Nazareth. He comes, he rises up, and he starts this new movement of people following him, talking about the kingdom of God. What, what, what's this kingdom of God? There ain't no kingdom but the Roman kingdom. Don't mess up our stuff now, Jesus. This carpenter's son, he's got a bunch of guys, these young men that follow him, and women are in the group as well, and he's going around performing miracles. He's messed up our system. We've got to shut it down. And so now we finally believe we finally believe we've shut him down we've got him crucified and of course although it was happening through human minds it was a demonic spirit behind it it was the devil trying to shut down God's plan and so of course Jesus gets crucified we talked about that we talk about that every year they put his body in this tomb which actually was more like a cave those of you who've been over there to the holy land with me have seen this evidence seen these areas what they believe of course where Jesus was buried and I, I want you to understand though the religious elite was so obsessed they made sure that around the tomb was guards they sealed the tomb up and they put guards around the tomb. Now, now here's the funny thing. They put guards around this tomb uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, they put guards around the tomb because they did not want the disciples to go and steal the body of Jesus. But they also somehow in the back of their mind knew that he was a teacher who had come from God. And they knew that there was something special on him. And after all the miracles they've seen him do, maybe, just maybe, him talking about he'll rise from the dead could be a true thing. How do you know that, Pastor? Because remember Nicodemus, those of you who know theology, Nicodemus was a member of that same religious elite. He came to Jesus in John chapter 3 by night. I wish I had some theology people in here with me. And the Bible says when he comes to Jesus, the first thing he says to Jesus, now I know we usually run to the fact that he says, he says to Jesus, you know, what must I do to be saved? Some of you think, no, he didn't even say that. What he said, he said, we know that you are a teacher sent by God. If the Jewish religious elite knew he was a teacher having been sent by God, they knew there was power on the inside of him. Some people try and shut you down because they know the potential that's on the inside of you. They put him, they put him in this borrowed tomb. And, and, and I love this because actually... They put him in a borrowed tomb. The Bible's very specific about a borrowed tomb. And, and I love the phrase borrowed. Because you only borrow what you're going to give back. I, I love that because it reminds me of the fact that actually for people of God, for you and me, tombs are only temporary for God's people. I, I need you to remember that. Tombs are temporary for God's people. One more time for the people at the back. Tombs are temporary for God's people. Now that tomb could be a dead situation. That tomb doesn't have to be something literal. But when you are a child of God, you might go to a tomb and a tomb we think of as a place where things have cessation, where they have their endings, where there's no more to them, where it comes to the final part. We think that in terms of a tomb. And no matter where you find yourself in life, it might feel like a tomb-like situation. But that tomb becomes a womb for God's people. I might go there, but I'm going there so I can grow there because I'll come out. There's something it has to do for me for me to be able to come out again. Somebody shout, it's temporary. They put him in this borrowed tomb. Now, I love this. And this whole story, guys, I need you to understand something about this story. Because the whole story does something, number one, for our salvation. But it also does something for your situation.
See, the whole story of the narrative of the resurrection, before I get into any more of the detail, the story of the narrative of the resurrection, it does something, number one, for your salvation. It gives me assurance in my salvation. The story of the resurrection gives me assurance in my salvation. I have salvation, and now I'm sure my salvation is secure because Jesus, who is the author of my salvation, rose from the dead. That means if I'm saved, I've got salvation, I will rise too. So the resurrection gives me assurance in my salvation, but it also gives me endurance in my current situation. Uh, for the people at the back it gives me endurance in my current situation because I can see that no matter what negativity what tomb like situation I find myself in that if I've got Jesus on the inside of me I can keep going because this is not how the story ends I wonder can I find 500 people who when you think back in your life since you became a Christ follower you realize that no matter what tomb situation the enemy tries to send you to you've got some endurance endurance on the inside of you that lets you know this is not how the story ends redundancy that's not how the story ends sickness that's not how the story ends come on now depression that's not how the story ends I know I've got endurance that can push me through assurance in my salvation and endurance in every situation that might be built to try and keep me in a tomb it's interesting, it's interesting. God's people, no matter where you find them, no matter what difficult situation you find them in, it might look like a tomb situation, a dead situation, but actually it becomes something that only ends up pushing them forward. Uh, I could even go all the way back to Moses. I don't want to digress too much, but Moses' mother put him in a basket. Others thought it was going to be a casket because she was putting him in a river full of crocodiles. But that basket ended up, because he's a child of God, ends up going into its destiny. It's a place that becomes his transportation, not something that's a dead situation. I've come to let somebody in here know that no matter where you find yourself, if you are a child of God, you've got resurrection power on the inside of you so you can rise through everything somebody scream everything they put him in this borrowed tomb and I, I love this because actually we just read one of my favorite parts of the whole text I love the attitude of the girls now I don't know if there's any praising girls in here today I don't know I, I, I have not just come to preach to the woman, but I want us as men sometimes to take inspiration because sometimes men just think of everything logically. We're quite logical. Everything has to be logical, logical. If I can't explain it and I don't believe it. Whereas actually faith sometimes requires you to go beyond the ability to explain and just believe. I, I love this because these girls, the Bible says early on the Sunday morning, early on the Sunday morning, Jesus, God, help me preach. Early on the Sunday morning is interesting to me because these girls get up and they make their way to the tomb. Now, I've preached a little bit about this before, but I haven't had a chance to really spend a lot of time on it. And I want to spend a bit more time on it today because I want to encourage somebody's praise in here. This is a day when we ought to raise our praise because of what's happened in the life of the story of Jesus' resurrection. Watch this now. Please don't miss it. These girls, of course, they rise up early Sunday morning. I love the fact that the girls make their way to the tomb. Pastor, why were they going to the tomb early Sunday morning? They were going to the tomb early Sunday morning not because they believed Jesus had rose from the dead. Now, we can criticize them right there and say, well, you should have known he already said that he'd rise from the dead. Why didn't you believe? There was a lot going on. And I think there's something really actually uh, uh, worthy in the fact somehow, somehow, if you'll allow me a little conjecture, something worthy in the fact that they were making their way to the tomb, even though they did not know he'd risen from the dead. They did not even remember what he'd said in his life about the fact that one day he'd be crucified, he'd die, and that he'd rise from the dead. They were going to the tomb because they were loyal. Okay, okay, okay. Push your neighbor and say, these girls, they're loyal. Go and tell them. They were going to the tomb because of loyalty. They, 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 this, is why, this is why I know the story's got to be true. Because Matthew would not have written it like that. He'd have said, we the fellas went to the tomb. The fellas had locked themselves in a room because they were afraid. It's the girls who said, we don't care. We're going to see Jesus. I, I love this. 
I love this because they're going to see Jesus. They, on their way there, the Bible lets us know they were asking themselves the question. If you look in the other accounts, they're asking themselves, how, how are we going to roll the stone away? This stone's too heavy for us. We, we're not going to be able to roll this big old stone out of the entrance of the cave, this tomb, this cave where Jesus had been placed. What are we going to do? They're still going even though they don't know how they're going to get in. They're still going even though they know it's a danger to their lives if these soldiers who've been placed there to block and to deal with any of his disciples who dare come near the tomb. The girl said, we don't care, fam. Them girls were from Lewisham, South London, I'm telling you. They said, we don't care, we're going to the tomb. Now, why are they going to the tomb though, pastor? They're going to the tomb because they want to protect Jesus' reputation. See, it was tradition, hey, it was tradition in those days that those people who had family who genuinely loved them, family who genuinely cared for them, if they were respected people in society, then people would go and they'd look after the corpse. See, see, if you walked past a tomb and in, in of course, natural decomposition of a body of a corpse, it's going to rot, the flesh is deteriorating, and of course it releases an odor. It releases a smell. It releases a stink. It releases a stench. Don't you remember, even when they were going to raise Lazarus from the dead, Jesus said, show me where he's buried. And Mary said, no, 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 by, he's been there four days, by now he stinketh. You remember that story? Those of you who read your Bibles other than Sunday, you remember that. And so this thing about, about the smell. The smell, no, no, no. We don't want, we don't want a smell. If, if you walked past a tomb and an odor came out of it, it told you that person was either not loved, not respected, or had a bad reputation because nobody was coming to look after it. So what they do is they bring spices, perfumes, and they place those spices and perfumes around the body to, to cover the smell. Jesus, God. So that the person's reputation, people would walk past and they'd get, they'd get a good smell coming out and know that, oh, this person must have been, so, oh, this must have been somebody special. This was somebody respectable. This was somebody adored. This was somebody who was loved. And I love the fact that these girls, watch this now, these girls decide, you know what? We don't know how we're going to get in. We don't know, we don't know how we're going to roll the stole away. We don't know how, how the soldiers are going to treat us. They're going to come against us. But, but we, we're going to go down there anyway to see Jesus. I, I love this, uh, for a couple of reasons because although the Bible talks about really they went down there to go and bring spices the spices are actually praises the spices are actually praises I love the fact also stay with me that they were going down there on the first day of the week Sunday early Sunday morning they were bringing spices spices meant that they wanted to protect the reputation of Jesus they wanted anybody who comes past here to know that Jesus was worthy Jesus was loved Jesus was celebrated Jesus was important and that's why I call their spices praises so when you come to church on the first day of the week as Christians that's why Sunday is the day for Christians to gather because it's the day traditionally that Jesus rose from the dead and so we put Sunday as our gathering day for worship and praises so your praises today are like the spices your praises are like the spices that the girls brought you know what I love about these spices and these praises is the fact that though the girls brought spices to protect his reputation every time you gather we gather and we come into the house of God and we bring our praises we're sending a message out to everybody that we want to protect his reputation we want you to know that he is loved we want you to know I wish I could find some people where, where, where's your spices where's your spices where's your spices that's why I I can't just sit next to anybody who don't want to bring some spices. I need spicy praise. Okay, okay, that's not good enough for you. Let me tell you about people who genuinely love Jesus. Watch this now. I love this about the girls. You all miss this in the story. The story is so crazy. The girls, the Bible lets us know in Matthew that they came down there Sunday morning with their spices. But screen team, do me a favor. Help me with Mark, Mark chapter 16. They were thinking about their praises from the night before. Saturday night, Jesus God, they went shopping. 
Saturday night, the girls, the Bible says, Saturday evening, this is after the Sabbath. So Sunday morning, they go to the tomb. But they're bringing their spices that they bought and prepared from Saturday night. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, I told her there's more than just that one Mary, went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Then very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Matthew tells us they went there on Sunday. Am I helping? you in here Matthew tells us they went there with their spices on Sunday morning but what Mark tells us is they prepared their spices on Saturday night in other words your praise on Sunday you need to be thinking about God's goodness from last night you can tell people who just praise religiously because they just come up on Sunday morning and go with whatever is going on. But the Saturday night people, you last night were laying in your bed saying, I can't wait to give God praise for providing for me. I can't wait to give God praise for protecting me. I can't wait to give God praise for giving me victory. Can I find 200 people who will throw your spices right now? These girls, these girls, look at your neighbor and say, my praise is spicy. Go on, tell them, my praise is spicy. I've got a whole load of spices to bring to God. I want every, that's why, that's why, listen, listen, that's why your praise needs to be public. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble now. Now, now I'm in trouble. Now I'm in trouble. Let's, let's get ready. I thought we were going to have some church guys, but I don't know. They may leave me after this. Because some people are living a private relationship life with Jesus. And maybe you're living a private relationship life with Jesus. Nobody really knows that you're a praiser of Jesus and a follower of Christ. And you're asking God for public blessings while you only have a private relationship. And maybe you ain't getting those public blessings because you're not letting the whole world know that he's worthy of my praise. He's worthy of my glory. Come on now, somebody. Let me find 500 people. I'm gonna go crazy today. 500 people. I know you're making notes, but put your notepad down and give God a praise in public. Let everybody watching you see you praise your God. See, spicy praise is when you give God praise with your mouth and your hands. You shout and you clap. You leap and you dance. You jump and you... These girls brought their spices, but today I need you to bring your praises and let the world know that I know my God lives. I know he's my provider. I know he's my victory giver. I know he's my healer. Sit down real quick. So, these girls, they're bringing spices on the first day of the week. And on the first day of the week, God's asking you, will you bring your spices? Will you bring your praises? Okay, 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 hold on, hold on. They're bringing praises, they're bringing spices, spices, praises, praises, spices, without even knowing he's risen from the dead. You see, 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 the problem is, the problem is most people only praise him when they see success. Man, I'm on my own today. If, I'm on my, if, if you're with me, shout back amen. Shout back amen. Most people only praise him when they see victory, but I love these girls because these girls are like, you know what, God? Come, come, Salome, come. Come, put your wig on. Come, let's go. <laughs> Baby, you ain't got time to put your face on. We're going to see Jesus. The disciples, the fellas, the fellas were happy to walk with him. While he was healing the sick, while he was raising the dead, while he was, I don't know if it was like that, but walking on water. Okay, that's how I'd walk on water. Yeah. But the girls said, we don't care. The fellas were like, oh, it's over. Oh, it was good while it lasted, but now we've got to look out for ourselves. Every man for himself, fam. Come, let's just lock ourselves in the room just in case the religious elite and the soldiers find out we were his followers and come get us and put us on a cross too. 
They were like, okay, we're, we're good to walk with him while, while things are looking victorious and successful. But the girls, they said, well, even if he's dead, he did so much for us while he was alive. Ah, oh, where's my church? He covered us while he was alive. One woman, Mary Magdalene, they said, the tradition says that she had seven demons cast out of her by Jesus. She's saying, Jesus got rid of my demons, so I'm going to come see him even if he's in a tomb. I'm going to protect his reputation. I want the world to smell good stuff coming off of Jesus. I'm going to give him all of the praise. I'll bless the Lord at... This is why I believe, now allow me my little preacher conjecture. This is why I believe on their way down, they're like, well, um, girls, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the spices, yeah? Because I know what you're like, you know. You, you, do you remember the salami? Okay, good. Okay, okay, because you got too much handbags. I don't know which one you put them in. <laughs> and they're walking down there, and, and then they think, oh my gosh, girls, who's going to roll the stone away? You know the big, massive stone in front of the entrance? Who's going to move that for us? Okay. They're worried about the stones. There's also soldiers there. And what they don't realize is because they decided to be the first praiser, spices, praises, spices, praises, praises, spices, God was going to let them be the first witnesses. Yeah. They walk up to, they walk up to where the tomb is. And here comes God, does not want these first witnesses, Jesus, can I preach in here? Does not want these first witnesses to get into any kind of trouble, assault. Remember, women are second class citizens. Women are second class citizens. Women are, are in some degree treated like chattel, like property. In that patriarchal, horrific first century Middle Eastern system. And yet, they put in their lives at risk with soldiers? Listen, here's the thing. See, I preached this the other day at another church. I was saying, I was saying, we forget that when you're really passionate. How many of you are passionate about Jesus? Wave your hand if you're passionate. Okay, okay, okay. Put your hands down quick because I've got something to tell you. The word passion comes from the word, the original word to suffer. In other words, you're only really passionate about what you're willing to suffer for. And these girls were so passionate about Jesus. They said, we don't business about no soldiers. And that attitude made heaven respond. Because they're going to be God's first witnesses. God put them under his witness protection program. He sends an angel down to cause an earthquake that knocks the soldiers out. I wish I had somebody who'd shout back amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm under witness protection. Every time you see me praise God, my spices are my praises, my praises are my spices, and I'm under his witness protection because I'm going to be the one to tell people and to protect his reputation. The angel comes down, an earthquake takes place. The soldiers get knocked out. The Bible says they fell out dead, faint, faint like they're dead, passed out. And the angel rolls the stone away. The angel rolls the stone away. Don't miss it. The angel rolls the stone away. Rolls the stone away. Rolls the stone away. Okay. And says to them, you're looking for Jesus. Come in. He's not here. This is the first miracle where Jesus is not there. All other miracles, Jesus is present. This miracle, Jesus is absent. They invite the girls in to see because you need to be an eyewitness. He emphasizes to them, don't forget what I'm telling you. He's risen. He's going to meet the guys in Galilee. Go and tell them. Okay, okay. They leave. Oh my gosh. Jesus, Jesus where, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? They leave. They leave, and on their way to tell the guys, here comes Jesus. Now, I told you he got up. What are you supposed to do when I say he gets up? He got up, and if he got up, 
that we will get up to. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's worth praising God for. But what I love, and hardly anybody preaches about it regularly, we talk about the fact that he got up. But don't forget, he got out. Okay, 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 this is where I'm going to finish. He got up, but he also got out. What do you mean he got out, Pastor? Of course he got out, yeah, but, but the stone was not yet rolled away. Okay, okay. The stone was rolled away to let the girls in, not to get Jesus out. Uh, okay, 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 Wh where's my church? And the reason he don't need the stone to be rolled away to get out is because he already told us when he was living, I am the door. That means when you've got Jesus, you're never trapped. When you've got Jesus, no matter what they try and block against you, you'll always get out. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, he got up, but he also got out. And I don't know what the devil's blocking you from this year. I don't know what the devil's shutting you in on this year. But not only will you get up, but you will get out. Look at your neighbor say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out this year. I'm getting up and I'm getting out. No tomb is going to hold me back. No dead situation is going to hold me back. They're going to laugh at me. They're going to think it's all over. The devil thinks he can shut me down. But I'm getting up and I'm getting Oh, where, where, where's, where, where's the praises? Where's the praises? Jesus got up, but he also got out. That means you don't need to stay where you think you're trapped. You ought to speak the name of Jesus over everything that's trying to block you. Speak the name of Jesus over everything that's trying to keep you down. Over everything that's trying to keep you bound. Somebody scream, he got up. Look at your neighbor and say, he got out. So right now for the next 30 seconds, I need some people to praise him because he got up. And I need somebody else to praise him because he got out. And let your neighbor know that no matter what happens this year, it cannot keep you down. It cannot keep you locked. It cannot keep you shut. Woo. Grab your neighbor by the hand one more time and say, neighbor, can I preach like I feel it? Say, neighbor, oh, neighbor. If I'm coming up, you're coming up with me. Pull on them and pull on them hard. And say, when I come out, you're coming out with me. So let's praise God in advance. Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm coming out of depression. I'm coming out of sickness. I'm coming out of low self-esteem because I've got Jesus. He tried type, he got up, and somebody else type, he got out. Now, stay standing, stay standing with me. Stay standing with me. What I love is the Bible says in Matthew, Say standing, we're nearly done, we're nearly done. Say standing with me, but what I love is that the Bible says in Matthew, as they left, Jesus comes to meet them. And what I love about these girls is these girls show us what you're supposed to do when you realize Jesus has risen from the dead. The Bible says they grabbed his feet. They didn't go high, they went low. And they began to worship him. Because the moment you realize that Jesus is alive and you realize that means you have hope, you ought to worship him. You ought to give him all the glory and all the praise. Can I find 300 worshipers in here? What happened is a simple story with a profound effect. I asked the question, what happened? The second question I would have asked right now is, so what? 
If Jesus rose from the dead, so what? Now, that's good. That's good for him, isn't it? <laughs> you Christians love jump up and down about Jesus rose from the dead. Okay, all right. If he did, you got witness statements. Pastor preached it. He said there's witness statements. Okay, good. Good for Jesus. Well, hey. So what? What happened? So what? Okay, here's the so what. Stay with me. Stay with me. Put Romans on screen. Romans chapter 8. This is what the so what is. Stay with me. Look at this. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives. Can I find some praises on the balcony and on the floor? If you've got the same spirit in you, then nothing can hold you down. Somebody shout, I'll get up. Say, I'll get out. What happened? Jesus rose from the dead. So what? Well, so what is that if the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is in you, then you ought to walk into every situation knowing, knowing that I'll come up and I'll come out. That's why David said, yea, though I walk. He didn't say though I stay in, he said though I walk through. Push your neighbors and keep walking, keep walking till you come out. Come on, till you come out, till you come out. Don't throw the towel in. What happened? So what? What next? Do you have his spirit living in you? Do you have Jesus? Yeah, I have Jesus because I go to church every night. No, 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 no. Have, have, have you, you, can, you can have a good time at church but still not have Jesus. Do you have Jesus? What happened? Jesus rose from the dead. So what? What does that mean? That means that if the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is in you, you will rise. Ultimately, your body will rise if you die before he comes back. But also, if the same spirit can make you rise from the greatest ever enemy, death, then the same spirit can make you rise from every other negativity. And so what next, what next is me asking myself, do I have Jesus? And I want to find out if there's anybody in this room who's not sure. Because that's one thing you ought to be sure of. That's one thing you ought to be sure of. Whether or not I actually have Jesus. There's there's 15 people in this room who God, now, now uh, the plan was to end with, we're going to end up, but I just feel like ending right now real quick. For those 15 people, because some of you aren't sure, some of you used to be with him, but you drifted. And on Easter Sunday, this is the day that you need to be answered the question, able to answer the question, what next? By saying, what next is for me to make sure I've come back to Jesus? Yeah. Listen to me. If you're one of those 15 in the room, I want you to just to walk down here quickly. Where, just tell the person next to you, excuse me, I know it looks like a long way to go. Come on, don't play with it. Wherever you're coming from, come quickly, quickly, quickly. Let them off the balcony. There's a couple up there as well. Let them down. Show them the way down to team. I want to invite you to the front. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Before I shut this service down, just look. Come on, I want to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you. This is important. This is very important. God bless you, darling. God bless you. Come on, stand right here. Come on, come on, come on. God bless you, God bless you, darling. God bless you. Shake my, shake my hand, shake my hand. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. 
Come on, I'm waiting for you. I know there's 15. I know. I'm a man of God. I know when God gives me a number now. God bless you, darling. God bless your heart. Shake my hand, darling. Can... <laughs> come on, I'm waiting. If they're coming from the balcony or at the back. There's a few of you who need to come back to Jesus. Today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. Come on. I'm going to wait for you. I can't, I can't bully you. I can only tell you what the Lord told me. Come on down. Come on. Bring them. Come on. Brother, you need to come. Come on, bro. Bro, you need to come back to the Lord. The Lord says, come back to him. I hear, I hear the Lord saying, I need to appeal to a guy, and I don't want to, I don't want to call your name out because. I don't want to get all weird like that, but come on, brother, you need to come. You need to come, bro. Wherever you're coming from, let him down. I know there's that man that's supposed to come down as well. Bless you, darling. Church, Easter Sunday, if Easter Sunday needs to be about anything, it needs to be about salvation. Look on your rows. Look at just do a row check. Check check next to you. Say, hey, have you been born again? Just, just do a row check. Say, are you a follower of Christ? <laughs> Come on, brother. Come on, brother. My bro. God bless you, darling. God bless you. Heart. Bless you, darling. Bless you. God bless you. 15 yet? I'm, I'm waiting for my 15. Look at your neighbor and say, come on, pastor's got a second service to do. You need to give your life to Jesus. <laughs> oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, somebody, I need, to, where's, where's my two? Come on, two more. I'm waiting for my two. Hey, they, they, I see you waving. Come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you, darling. God bless you. Well done, darling. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you, darling. God bless your heart, God. Hey, we got more. We got overflow. Overflow. Come on, overflow. Listen. On this Easter Sunday, on this Easter Sunday, we as a church family are going to pray over you. Church, I need you just to stretch your hands this way. And you at the front, just lift your hands high. Like you're going up. Like you're about to rise up. And come out of whatever the enemies tried to trap you in to keep you back from Christ. Easter Sunday is about really resurrection, and that is the assurance of our salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we as a church family pray over these individuals who have committed to you in this room. Father, I pray and ask you to accept them, receive them with your loving kindness. Only you know what they've been through, the struggles, the difficulty, the way the enemy has tried to trap them and keep them back from relationship with you. Only you know the torment and the trauma and the difficulties that life has thrown at them. But Father, today on Resurrection Sunday, they have come to give their lives to you. To say, I, I, I know now what happened. I know so what and and this is now my my what next is giving my life to Jesus because I need to make sure that Jesus is in me so that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead I will rise again too to be with him forever and even as I live my life for him honoring him worshiping him that no matter what negative situation comes against me nothing will be able to hold me down. I will always get up and get out. And that's why I'll continue to bring my spices, my praises, my praises, my spices, to honor him, to worship him and to glorify him. Now, I want you all just to say these words after me. Say them after me. Church, we're going to help them. Say, Father, forgive me of all of my past that has not honored you today I get up and I get out of the life that has had me trapped 
I accept Jesus and I know and believe that Jesus receives me. Forgive me, bless me, and receive me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now give God the biggest praise. Turn around, guys. Just turn around. The team's going to talk to you about your next steps. Going to talk to you about your next steps. Tab Church London, if you're glad you were in church on Easter Sunday, make some noise. Hug at least three people before you leave this room and tell them I'm getting up and I'm getting out. Wow, wow, wow. What service. Incredible. Go, go up. Sir. He got up. Then he got out. Ow, what wow. an encouragement. It was. It was powerful. It was powerful. Truly. And it's, it's the beauty of Here Come the Girls as well. Yes. So much that as a man, we can learn from the ladies where they brought their spices. They prepared their spices the night before. And as Pastor likened it to your praises, bringing your praises and preparing your praises from the night before or even earlier in the day, thinking about the goodness of Jesus. Being intentional, right? I love yeah. the fact that they had the courage. They understood that, listen, God had done so much for them Come whilst on. he was alive. So at the time when they thought Christ was dead, they still wanted Come to on. continue that on, that act of love, so that powerful. distinction of what truly, what passion yeah. is, it is, is it to is. be willing to suffer. But today has been a celebration from Come beginning on. to end. Tab worship, yes. tab mass choir. Come on, they, they did their thing. In Incredible. It's truly been a celebration. I'm sure you guys all loved it as well. Listening online, with yeah, at yeah, home, yeah. in your yeah. car, at work. Come on. Today's been great. Making me think about wanting to join the mass choir because they were giving vibes today. <laughs> with the little steps. With the... I loved it. I loved it. it I honestly, beautiful. big Easter weekend at the tabs. It's truly phenomenal. Come on, come on, come on. And it's not over yet because we still have another service. So yep. for those of you who didn't manage to get into this one, or for those of you who are watching online, you are not missing out on the experience. It's going to be amazing. The continuation of praising God. And it doesn't have to end just here. You can think about the goodness of God every single day. Yeah. Don't just wait for Easter. Don't just wait for Christmas. But think about it every single day, what he has done. Let's yeah. uh, even get somebody who we can ask how their experience was today. How are listening? Welcome. Just in the middle here. Oh, okay. Welcome, welcome. What's your name? Lola Day. And how did you find today's service? It was amazing. Um, the praising, the worship, the message. Really, really amazing. So yeah, glad I, glad I could come. Got here a little bit late, but I managed to get a seat, so I'm glad, good. yeah. Good, come, good. On. come on, that was God's favour. Yeah, <laughs> and what was your takeaway from the service? What's one thing that really stood out? Um, that even sometimes when I feel like I'm down, to always get up. Um, yeah, because sometimes you can really like wallow and just want to stay down but to always get up. So that message really reinforced that for me today. It's definitely being encouraged, honestly. As you said, because he got up, you too, no matter the situation, we have that power, right? Yeah, yeah. Living within us. Have a blessed week. Thank you so Thank much. You. See you soon. Thank See you. Soon. Thank you. We have someone else. There's so many people that were blessed on, by today's on, service. On. I'm sure you were. Come and join us. Welcome. <laughs> let, them, let them know your name. Deborah. Twins. Out two Debras <laughs> on screen. Love it. <laughs> and what did you enjoy about today's service? Uh, I just, everything was just magical and it reminded me of exactly why I came to the faith and why I gave my life to Christ. It was just the, the best reminder and I needed it. What did you love about the women who were bold, who were courageous, that were still willing to protect Christ? I feel like that. Like, I feel, I feel like that. We're bold, we're always courageous. And it just reminded me again, keep doing what you're doing, keep fighting the good fight, keep telling people about Christ and never get shy, never get dim about it, never get comfortable with it as well. Just keep going. So good, love so that, good. Thank you so much, Deborah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That's so key. So key. Great time. Honestly, so key to, to find understand. The good faith, to keep on pushing, to keep on going. Come on, come on. That's what it's all about. We have to remember every single thing that God has done for us. And we have to remember that Jesus, especially in this season, let this invigorate your faith as you go into your week, as you go into the month of April, fourth one. But also let it cause you to want to give back to God, Come on. knowing all that he's done. You know, John 3, 16 talks yep. about, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, a sacrificial giving offering. So why not for you as a response to what Jesus has done for you, why not you give back to God and show him how great he has been for you in whatever situation, whatever circumstance it is. 
Most definitely. And on that note as well, just to remind you guys, this uh, coming month, the TYA, we have uh, continuing on the Get The Bag series Come part on. two. Part two. We had so many of you guys already there and in attendance. Come on. This session. I'll unpack it a bit further and continue on. It's going to be amazing. We had a phenomenal session last time and we are two, two sessions in. We've got yeah. two more to go. And it's going to be phenomenal, learning about finances, learning about different uh, ways to kingdom be a behaviors. kingdom steward, yep. but also to have kingdom wealth. Because, you know, we got to get the bag. <laughs> Most definitely. I love it. So we actually have someone else that's going to join us today who's uh, had a great service. So come, come on, let's come on. on. Come on, bro. How are you? Hi, welcome. Welcome. You okay? Good to see you. Good to see you. How did you find today's service today? And what's your name to start off with? Uh, my name's Nathaniel. And um, Easter service is always my favorite. Easter Sunday is my favorite day of the year. This is my favorite time to give God thanks, praise, glory. I look forward to just lifting up his name, magnifying his name, praising him for everything that he's done. And for more than that, just because he is God. And really, from moment one right up to the end, um, it's all just alive in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit and soul. And just to be like, it, it just in God's energy is, is the most beautiful thing that there is. I can't, there's, there's no words that really sum it up. So all I can say is that the greatest act in the history of the world is what we're celebrating here today. Amen. The greatest moment in the history of mankind is what we're celebrating here today. The Amen. ultimate sacrifice, the, the ultimate, I mean, it's just, there's just nothing more that anyone could ever give and God so loved the world gave his only begotten son subjected himself to the life of flesh like to, to actually be in our condition holy and completely and then to to give it all for us I mean it's powerful, it's powerful isn't beyond it come on come on beyond all measure, beyond all measure. love that Amen. what was your favorite takeaway from today um I think uh what Pastor was saying about the fact that the sisters were the ones that came to see Christ. Come on. The brothers were all locked away. Where bolted. were they? Shout out to the sisters. Yeah, they, they, were, they were nowhere to be seen. Hello. It was like, it's done, it's over. And those sisters were like, I'm going to go and preserve this legacy of my Jesus that was here, that, that did all of this for me when he was here. He's not gone. I need to now go and honor him and I need to go and protect and uphold his greatness. So that, and then the fact that, and I mean, I know it seems simple, but the fact that the stone, Jesus is not there. And then the stone gets rolled away and that's to let the sisters in to see. I mean. It's powerful, yeah, it's powerful. That's, that's, yeah. Thank you so much, bro, for coming on. You're right, I can feel, I can yeah. feel the Holy Ghost is, is running through you. I can tell you absorbed you. the word, come it on, was a blessed on. one. Enjoy Thank the rest you of so the much. Thank you so much. Have a great Take Easter. Care, and we'll see, see you soon. See you, family. It has been a truly incredible time. It's been phenomenal. At the time. I checked the comments as well. I could see that you guys were engaged. You guys have written out, he got out, he got up. So come family, on. we love you. Have a blessed week. Take and we will see you soon. Yes. All right, God bless you. Don't forget, he got up, we can get out. He caught up, he gets out. Thank you.